Good morning, everybody. This is uh, uh, Lawrence Kazan Kasimi and Mike Dan um, and Dan Burke with our usual Friday morning mindset call. Um, as usual, a little introduction is the slaughterhouse of failure is not in my destiny. I will persist until I succeed. That's Ogmandino. So today we've actually got, um, we're very lucky, we've got a special guest um, whom we had the pleasure of of formally working a little bit with in the last uh, maybe year. And, and uh, this last weekend we went to Chicago and he uh, was instrumental in organizing a group of pharmacists. And he's got a very, very tight ship organized, very organized person with pharmacies around the country. So Dan, if you'd like to um, tell us a little bit about Richard Moon. Absolutely. So uh, welcome everybody to our Friday uh, morning call. Um, as Lawrence said, we were out in Chicago last weekend presenting at a pharmacy uh, conference um, that uh, Richard Moon puts together. Richard uh, Rich is a pharmacist um, and owns multiple locations. Oh, yeah. Multiple states. Can I throw a wrench in the works and say, could we put this on the screen until we get... Um, so he received his BS in pharmacy from the University of Buffalo in 1986 and his doctorate of pharmacy degree in 2004 from uh, Shenandoah University in Winchester, Virginia. He's actively involved in the Alliance for Pharmacy Compounding as a full fellow, uh, having served on the board of directors on the Foundation Research Committee and as a past president and treasurer. He's a member of the American Pharmacy Association. The, Pharmacy Society of the State of New York, the uh, Pennsylvania Pharmacists Association, and the National Community Pharmacists Association. Um, he's where he serves on the Compounding Steering Committee. He's currently an alternate on the FDA Compounding Advisory Committee. He's president of Pharmacy Innovations, as I mentioned, a group of specialty and customized medication pharmacies with locations around the country. Uh, he resides in Jamestown, New York, and was elected to the board in 2012. So we're super excited to have Rich here. Uh, as I mentioned, we presented at a conference out in Chicago last weekend, uh, and it was a it was a phenomenal event. The, the people that were there, you know, it's just, everybody just had kind of an, an abundance mentality where they were there to help each other, uh, learn about what they're doing that's being successful in their pharmacies, and teach others uh, what's being successful. And then there were about 12, uh, 10 or twelve vendors there um, who had products there that could help in the, the pharmacy space. So thank you very much for being here with us today, Rich. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, it was a wonderful event. You know, it's probably one of the best conferences I've been to as far as uh, folks wanting to help each other. Uh, and it's just a, just a phenomenal group of people that were there, vendors and uh, pharmacists alike. So you know, I guess my first question for you is, as a pharmacist, what are you doing to stay ahead of the, the curve? <laughs> That's a full-time job. There's um, a gentleman by the name of Herbert Meyer wrote a couple of books that I recommend folks read. Teaches you how to look at data, how to analyze data in the business world. He's actually an interesting guy, and I got a chance to meet him. He was the number two man at the CIA when Ronald Reagan was president and probably is responsible for saving more lives in the world than just about anybody else by staving off nuclear war. And he did it by analyzing data. They analyzed a lot of interesting data about the Soviet Union and they concluded that it was going to collapse if they did X, Y, and Z, which Reagan proceeded to do. So consequently, he saved a lot of lives. And I try to take that same teachings that he does and what um, he prescribes and put it into place in our business world. And really, if you want to think about it, he's probably the father of modern business analytics. And while most of us don't have an ability to tap into a company like Quintiles because it costs $100,000 a month to get data, we do have the ability to read and look at what's around us and say, how does that affect my profession? How does that affect what I'm going to do today, tomorrow, six months, 60 months from now? So it's, like I said, it's kind of a full-time job. Yeah, so you're, so you're evaluating the data kind of nationwide 
based on you know those metrics that you're looking at and then looking at your personal businesses and assessing that and how you're going to move forward. Right. And, it, and again, it's not just limited to pharmacy. I mean, it could be robotics. It could be energy consumption. It could be how we deliver um, anything. Like Amazon is a, was a um, upsetting, upset the business apple cart, right? So there's a whole bunch of things that you have to look at that can come into play and in how it affects your life and your income and your revenue. Awesome. Um, so, so along those lines, you know, adding service lines is obviously something that you're looking at doing based on, you know, the conference that we just had. Um, there's multiple vendors there. So what are your thoughts on adding service lines to the pharmacy uh, space moving forward? I know you mostly have compounding pharmacies, but you do have some retail um, at, at your pharmacies as well. So just to define what compounding pharmacy is, it's customized medication an individual medication prepared in a lab by or an individual patient by a prescriber instead of an FDA or um, another country's manufactured product. So we do a lot of that. We are compounding centric for sure. We do dispense FDA products as well. And I, when we look at adding product lines, I mean, if you think about what a typical Walgreens or Rite Aid has or CVS, you walk in, they got a candy section, they got a photo section, they got this, they got that. I mean, it's all pretty standard cookie cutter stuff. And so for pharmacies in my uh, workspace to succeed, we have to look at things that are different. Uh, I think we were the first group that introduced a female sexual health session uh, about 15 years ago before that they were in CVSs. But our colleagues are very adept at our hormone consultations. So we have ancillary services that tie into our core businesses. So when we look at lines of product, it isn't just, oh, I'm going to put a new line of cookies in. Or no, there's a new foot deodorant over there or whatever. I mean, it's, it's something that is complementary to our core business. Awesome. So, you know, one of the questions that we get a lot um, when we're talking to other folks about the business of Pharmanex is, you know, particular specialties, you know, why would a, why would a podiatrist be interested? Why would an OBGN, GYN be interested in implementing this into their uh, practice? Um, and I'm going to ask you that question. Why would a pharmacy, uh, particularly a compounding pharmacy, be interested in implementing the biophotonic scanner and the supplement lines into their business model? So it's, Interesting that uh, a lot of what we do is nutritional. When you're doing hormone consults or wellness visits, which is primarily the type of patients and clients we see, a lot of what you have to talk to them about is living a healthier and better life and essentially taking some of the herbals or vitamins that are out there and trying to make them better. A lot of them believe in that. They're of that age and of that uh, mindset. and Not that they don't want to see a physician. But if they understand that they can do something to keep them from seeing a physician, it's probably better off for them in, in their life. I mean, we don't have a, a little political, but we don't have a health care system, right? We have a sick care system. So if they can avoid seeing a doctor, that's good. And, and as you saw at the uh, seminar, there's only two items out there that you can have a measurable uh, report, if you will, of whether a vitamin is working. And the Pharmanex machine scanner is one of them. The other one was a strip, I think you saw, right? Yeah. You know, for, yes. nitric oxide. Strip for nitric oxide. Yeah. So, I mean, you can actually measure the nitric oxide uh, increase after taking a capsule, but there are not a lot of tools out there that can be used to visually show that this is working. And the Pharmanex scanner is one of those. And that's a powerful thing to put in somebody's hands. And you're talking about visual, tactile, and then auditory education. So by the time you hit all three of those, if you've got a willing and open-minded person, it's a pretty, pretty powerful thing to have on your uh, armament. Absolutely. Um, well, we're yeah. at... Sorry. Go ahead, Lawrence. No, I was just going to... Go ahead, Dan. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You're good. Go ahead. I'm just going to say, you know, added to, to that, the... 
the uh, support that is the company in terms of science, technology, innovation. I mean, you know, it's a 36-year-old company. It's 5A1 rated on the stock market. It was rated among the top 100 most trustworthy companies in the U.S. Uh, and right now we're at a, at a, a symposium here where um, people from various parts of the uh, country come to actually learn more about it. And it's important that you as a, as a, farm, a compounding pharmacy would group of pharmacies would actually, um, you know, be excited about it and endorse it. And, and in fact, I think how many pharmacies do you have in your group? So well, there's basically two groups and we have a total of about 300 pharmacies. And the TC, the TCG group where you guys were at last week um, is an arm of that. And that, that group has 200 pharmacies. My arteria group has 165 or so, but there's about 65 overlapping. So I'll told about 300 pharmacies. So you're actually an underachiever. Uh, well, I certainly, in 30 years I've been in business, don't have a $3 billion company. So by that standard, absolutely. I'm joking. But, but it's, um, I think what we saw, as Dan alluded to a minute ago, the, the com more than camaraderie that you've managed to uh, create there with this warm and fuzzy feeling with all of your pharmacies and the, you know, the feeling of support for each other and your way of being able to supply um, raw materials at reduced cost for everybody and, you know, working for the common good of your group and the way you've done it, but you've also done it in a way where you've maintained the personal relationships where that, that was I think, the goal. Is key. that's the key, yeah. Absolutely. So the people I work with and the people in the group are the, some of the best pharmacists in the country, if not the world. So it's a real easy group to want to help. Yeah, and your, your leadership style, you, know, you can really tell being at that meeting that people really, really look up to you, um, look to, to you as a leader. You know, what would you say your leadership style is? And Okay, so I appreciate you saying that. I never really thought about whether I had a leadership style or not. I, um, I think it's just being genuine. I, I, you know, I, well, th well, thank you. I, um, I just look at myself as somebody who wants to accomplish a goal and I need people to do it. So if I um, don't treat folks fairly, if we don't respect them, and if we don't do what we can to help them achieve their goals, then we won't achieve our goals and I won't achieve my goals. Right. So it's all about um, your, so your leadership style is essentially just helping other people reach their goals and their dreams. And in and, and, and doing that, you're helping yourself reach those, your goals. Well, it, 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 there's another part to that, right? Obviously within my own company, we follow policies in order to be fair to all of our associates. So I will do everything I can to help them in any way that I can within the confines of our policies. We won't break the policies to do something or not. That would make it seem unfair to another person in our company. So that's also a big part of it is, is the perception of being fair. I mean, you look, you look at somebody like Branson who says that the customer doesn't matter. It's the employees that matter. They take care of the employees and the customers will come. That's not true. Not in my business. Everybody's important. The customer is important or client, if you will, and the employee is important. You can't, you can't oversimplify something the way some of those guys and like him and some of the people in books try to do. Actually, that's pretty interesting with you. Yeah, that's actually interesting because in some ways, what the way, you've, the way you have your relationship with all of your um, pharmacies a little bit similar to the way we have a relationship with our um, team members and, and we strive to do everything possible to make them successful and by doing so they're helping the people who they deal with all the, the, the that's one of the reasons we get along so well yeah so so um, 
so Richard, you started with, with a couple of scanners. Tell us how did that go? How did that go? How's it going for you? Well, we have six scanners, one in each of our pharmacies. And then I, it's going okay. I have no complaints about it. That COVID probably put a, a damper on our growth of it, but we're getting steady people coming in. The people that we see love it. And we've got a couple other people that have purchased and underneath us. So that's starting to help. I think that, uh, you know, the employees like it, the people coming in like it. I, we have the most success, I think, in our Florida location. But one of the things, I don't have a ton of walk-in business. So if I had a busier CVS corner style store, I could probably do a lot better with it. But I'm not unhappy with our progress at all and the, and the path that we're following. Yeah, so you're so, so it's not only you're not only implementing the um, pharma the scanner and the nutraceuticals into your locations. You've also introduced the skincare side of things as well. And to your point, Rich Rich came out to Utah with Suzanne Williams um, last I think it was last January or February, and then you know they decided to pull the trigger and put a scanner in one of their stores, and we we're going to kind of roll out one a month or two a month, and then COVID hit, and you know it was just a you know a disaster for six or eight months, and you know things were things were slow through no fault of of pharmacy innovations, um, just the circumstances. But you know I think what he's doing is is creating a, 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 you know, his stores as a destination point with both the nutraceuticals and the uh, having the skincare available. Yeah, well. we're, we're trying to switch over to a, um, a different model. It used to be that being a compounding only quote unquote pharmacy was a pathway to financial success. And through the business analytics, and it's my view that we have to bring people in for specialty items going forward because compounding alone won't do it. We'll be able to leverage the traffic for compounds, which we, you know, make some money on and pay the bills with. <clears throat> but it's also nice to have a revenue stream that's not tied directly to the to the box store. So, and yeah, we were out there right before COVID started. In fact, uh, for your team, Dan, I don't know if you... Uh, have told any of them, but you were kind of sick when we were out there, weren't you? I was. I had I had a uh, I had a little bit of a cough and a sniffle and some other things, and you know we kind of surmised that maybe I had COVID then, <laughs> right? <laughs> These things were kind of starting to hit. Yep, I remember. So, Richard, um, one of the important things that we Dan and I deduced from from the uh, event this weekend past weekend was the importance and the relationship that your pharmacies your compounding pharmacies have with physicians because obviously that's where the bread and butter comes from um and so i think the way you're talking about you know leveraging your time by leveraging with the physicians each one has three to five thousand patients and and, and, you know, I think that is, is, is a place where obviously we can help your whole organization really grow by putting the scanners with the doctors as well, but you leading the way. I appreciate that. And um, so that three to 5,000 number, I think is typical of an average insurance accepting position. A lot of our practitioners have one tenth of that in their practice portfolio. So they have a much more intimate relationship with their patients. Okay. So they're spending more time with their patients, consulting with them more and, and providing real solutions rather than just, you know, moving them, coming in, seeing them for five minutes and moving them out, out the door for the next patient to come in. Truly, true story. Are they more like boutique doctors? Well, not boutique. It's they're integrated physicians is what they like to call themselves. Integrated physicians. Okay, so they do spend more time. So that's actually even an advantage because they have, um, you know, a better relationship with the patient of actually talking to the patient and listening to the patient, which a lot of the doctors don't have time to do anymore. That's a true story. Yeah. So we we were very impressed with with the quality of, of the people that you have and the passion that they have. And I think this is 
leadership that you've been able to instill in everybody. So what makes you tick? Uh, uh, you figure that out, will you let me know? <laughs> will your wife. So, so Rich is kind of a renaissance man. He, he plays multiple instruments. He's into judo and, you know, some other things, you know, obviously the pharmacy space. Um, so, he, you know, he's a really, really interesting person because he has all these different facets. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of those things probably helped uh, cultivate his leadership style um, just from the philosophies of those different types of, of activities. Would you say that's fair, Rich? Yeah, I'll, sure. We'll go with that. You know, I, um, <laughs> there's a, there's a, uh, obviously you are a product of your environment as well as your um, genetics. And I, I've had a good environment and I've done the best to cultivate people around me that are positive. Um, being in the martial arts, that's certainly easy to do because you've got a lot of people who work very hard. Um, getting my pilot's license is also an endeavor that required focus and teamwork from several people to get you there. You don't get your pilot's license on your own. It just doesn't happen. And then, you know, clearly being a pharmacist isn't one of the easier paths to take in college. So I don't think I've shied away from hard work. You see, you see, you know, and I don't expect people that work for me to shy away from hard work either. But you've said, you see, hard work, hard work, there's a lot of people that do hard work, but they, they not without, without actually having any proper discipline. And I think to, in order for you to become a pilot, in order for you to have the success that you have with all of your pharmacies, um, to be a musician, you need to practice. You know, all of these things require discipline. And I think the fundamental, um, fundamental word for everybody to be successful is to have discipline because hard work by itself. I mean, you could be wheeling a barrow out there every day and that's hard work, but that's not discipline. So there's a, uh, there's a gentleman out there named Jim Alampi. Jim Alampi. He was an entrepreneur and helped several businesses grow, including one to a multi-billion dollar oil business. And there are YouTube videos out there that you can watch. And he helps folks like us do that discipline part. And he is very, his, his uh, hour and a half video is worth watching. It's kind of laid back because he's kind of laid back, but it just goes to show you that you don't need to be a high strung individual to achieve success. Uh, I would recommend folks looking into those videos. They're very, very good. How do, how do you spell his last name, Rich? You know? It's with an A, Alampi, A-L-E-M-P-I. And there's another gentleman out there, if you get a chance to listen to, called Dean Manuto. Dean Manuto. He has a book out there called Yescalate, Y-E-S, Escalate, Yescalate. And it's how to get people to say yes. And that's the, he's a very interesting fellow with a number of neuroscience tips. Uh, those are, you know, those can help. Those are a couple of tools that can help people succeed. Interesting. That's excellent. Yes, Kalate. I like that name even. Yes, Kalate. Well, the, dude, the guy's pretty smart. So, so what is it that makes you, you personally, you know, piloting and music and, and martial arts and, and, and your businesses and what, what is, who are you? What, what makes you tick? Well, I don't play video games. So maybe that's why I got time to do that stuff. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I just like doing stuff. You know, I, you know, people will joke and they say, Rich, you don't sleep. Actually, I sleep plenty, but I maximize my time when I'm awake. Yeah. So it's all, it's always having that next goal to reach. Create, creating those, you know, it's keeping you uh, invested in what, in your personal growth and, and, and in doing that, it's going to help you in your business life as well. Absolutely. It's interesting too, because, you know, and relating it to music, I was telling my guitar instructor, right? Because every musician still has an instructor, right? You never grow out of that. If you do, 
and you think you're the best and you don't need an instructor, then you clearly don't understand music because you cannot master music. Even the masters don't master music. They'll tell you the same thing. But I was telling my guy that uh, I wanted to take and do a, a shred version of The Devil Went Down to Georgia, right? Instead of the violin, just transpose that all into the guitar. And uh, even he didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, if, if you don't have something that you want to do with it, then, you know, you can get stuck playing, you know, Sweet Home Alabama for the rest of your life and, and never do anything different. So um, the, the way you do grow and achieve is to set a goal and, and work for it. And, and don't expect it to materialize in 10 minutes either. Yeah, it takes years to get a black belt. It takes months to get a pilot license. It takes decades to learn how to play guitar. Yeah, it's interesting. We live in a we live in a world today where everybody wants everything now, right? And so, you know, somebody that's overweight, they come in and say, "Hey, I want to lose weight," and they expect to lose all. You know, they spent thirty years being overweight, and then they they come in to see the doctor and they expect you know solution and and for that to happen overnight. Or people get into the business that we're in with the biophotonic scanner and they think it's going to be easy. And, you know, if they don't place a scanner in the first month or something, they kind of say, Oh, well, you know, this is, you know, it's too difficult or whatever it may be, but you know, nothing. That's a great queen. Yeah. That's a great queen song, by the way. I want it all. and I want it now, <clears throat> but that's not reality. No, it's, it's not. You have to be willing to put in the hard work, be committed to what you're doing, be disciplined. So what's that quote? That took me 25 years to be an overnight success. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no, that's perfect so um richie it's 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 uh nine it's well nine o'clock um it's ten o'clock here or ten and it's nine o'clock somewhere <laughs> <laughs> so so um i wanted to thank you there's i don't know somebody's got a hand raised if they've got a question or anything like that or if anything does somebody have a question? Somebody raise their hand. If not, do you have any any um, any advice for for entrepreneurs who have who are building their businesses like you have? You've got multiple businesses. What advice do you have for people like that? For people like us? So make sure make, <clears throat> make sure you map out your progress and don't expect too much because you need other people to succeed and they don't have the same expectations you do. Uh, you, you cannot force your success on somebody else. You need them to help you. And so they work at their own pace. So that's the same in any business. You could be launching a new FinTech product, but you need to sell it and you need somebody to buy it. So that could take two years instead of two months. Be patient, work hard, believe in what you're doing. If you believe in it, somebody else will. And the sooner or later, those somebody else's will add up to enough people to make it work for you. Lead by example. Lead by example and be positive about it. Passionate negativity about it. doesn't get negativity doesn't get you anywhere. Right, right. Passionate. Okay. Well, keep, keep a positive mindset in keeping with your theme, right? Absolutely, hundred percent. Awesome. Well, we're coming up on ten o'clock. Uh, it's kind of our ending time. So, if there are no questions, uh, I want to thank Rich Moon for joining us today. Lots of valuable information, insights, and and mindset tips. Uh, it's been fantastic working with you, Rich. Uh, we loved being at your event uh, last weekend. It was phenomenal. And uh, you know, the next couple of weeks are going to be. Uh, following up with all the folks, you know, we received a very, we had a very positive response from everybody there. And, uh, you know, we're going to place a couple of scanners from that event and hopefully, you know, through follow up in the next couple of weeks, place even more scanners with the attendees. So it was a, it was an awesome event. We wish, you know, thank you very much for uh, inviting us to join you in Chicago. And we look forward to working with you more in the future. Sounds like so, a plan. I appreciate it. And thanks for having me. Um, so I just would like to put a little challenge out for you since I know you're very competitive. So let's, let's put a goal and see how many scanners do you think you can get your group to have by the end of the year? 
I'm not going to pin a number on that. I have to do some analytics first. <laughs> <laughs> he, is a, he is a numbers guy overall. After all. That's great. That's an awesome response. Yeah, good job. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, we'll see everybody next Friday. And don't forget about the Monday and Wednesday uh, calls as well. Um, have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, Rich. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Thanks. Rich. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good, great day. Thanks, Danny. Thanks, Gabby.